Hi, today I'm going to help set up an AV81 starter and add-on. I'm going to show the four foot section, but I'm also going to expand to the eight in case you have a bigger unit. There are a couple tools that you'll want to get yourself beforehand. Um, if you have a power drill, a cordless, I would suggest using that. It just makes it easier. Things will go faster. If not, you can do everything, tighten everything by hand with a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I'll point out later, longer versus shorter, those details. You'll want to unpack your, your items. I have everything kind of laid out. If that will help you, great. Um, you're going to start with the two legs. You'll want to lay them on their backs, and then we're going to put the cross rails on. I have this one staged already. You want to make sure that your notches are up. This front, can you come over here? For the front connection, you have a, a screw, a two-inch screw, and then a nut behind. So you'll just want to line up your holes, feed it through. The center hole. You might have to wiggle it a little to get it straight. Come on. And then tighten with the nut behind. For the top cross brace, you're going to find your three quarter inch screws. That's the H1. And they're going to go into threaded inserts. You have to make sure on this top one that the notches are facing up. That's where the uprights will slide later. So make sure that those are facing up as you do this. There are two holes in this top. You'll want to line those up. I laid my, my legs uh, the distance apart. You can gauge that by these braces and get them staged. And then using your three quarter inch, I would get them started, not tighten it all the way until you have everything in. Come to the other side, line it up, do the same, and then you can tighten these down. Again, if you have a Phillips head screwdriver, you can use that. The cordless just helps with speed. So then I'm going to set this up. I'm going to move back just for this. And you will want to find your door. Justine, can I pan out on this? I, I'm no. so close. There's no pan out? No, okay. unless you zoomed in. I didn't mean to. You want to find your door front. And you're going to need the 3 quarter inch screws again. So you need four of those. You'll line up the slots in the bottom panel on this. And I would just get one started, the back one started on each side for placement. So you'll want to make sure that you have the front and back holes lined up for placement. Now this is where I'm going to use a long screwdriver. You can either use a long. This can go all the way through this hole in the top. If you don't have a long screwdriver, you can use a short or lean. Thank you. You could lean a shorter one this way. I'm going to go through the top since I have a long screwdriver. Line it up and tighten right there. Same thing on the other side. People with long hair, make sure you don't tighten your hair in underneath one of the screws like Justine is doing. Cameraman has jokes. Okay. Once that is set, if you're doing any run longer than four feet, you're going to want to join the units together. You can do two, three, four, uh, however many 
you have space for. If you just have a four footer, you can skip this step and go right to the end panels and back panel. So I have another one prepped here for me. You will want to place them next to each other. And then we're going to connect the legs. So we'll want to make sure that they kind of run in a straight line. She's playing with the adjustable feet. If you have an, a floor that's not level, you can do so now and get them to line up very nicely. For this, you will need the long screws that are found in your frame add-on kit. These are the long three ones. And you will need nuts with these as well. There are three different locations to connect. So screw both legs. And then tighten with the bolt. Back here, through both legs. And then the last point is through the front legs. It's kind of hard to see. Um, if there's a hole down there, you'll want to connect those as well. We will connect the top of the door also, but that's later. That's with the clear divider that should have been packed with your frame as well. Once you get all of your units connected together, or if you're just doing a forefoot, then you will attach the back panel. You'll set in your base deck. You'll want to make note that there are different size notches on these. There's a small notch and a bigger notch. The small notch goes towards the back to go around the legs. So I like to put the front in first just to feed it in. Get done in there and then drop it around the legs. That's what those notches are for. These do not get screwed down. You do not need to screw them down. They can, there are holes there. They can be secured, but it is not necessary. That will stay there. For the back panel, you'll want to find the canoe clips. They're little... Uh, dart clips that we have. They, it's just a push pin in. So you will take the core plastic panel, unfold it. Do you want to come around back? There are eight different places. You just take your push pin, put it through into the hole, and push. It's a very easy snap in. You'll feel it go all the way. There are eight different locations to put this in. I'm going to skip a few just for your sake right now. Get those connected and then we will do the end panels. These will be in a separate box themselves. There are black joint connector bolts. Those are the screws you need for this. And you will also need some nuts. And an Allen wrench that comes with those? Yes, the Allen wrench. Oh, I put it over here. Okay. The Allen wrench is for the hex head on this, and that is in your hardware pack. These are universal, so they could go either side. You'll want to line it up. I like to get the top one started first to so get it in place. You might have to lift a little bit, feed it through there, and then if you don't have too much in your hands. Tighten the nut. You can use the hex wrench to whoop, really tighten that up. There are two more points on this. There's one in the back corner and then in the front. Just line them up. Your screws should slide right through. And then reach from the inside. Oh, oh touch your hand on me, screw, sorry. Yep. Um, and do that both sides. Tighten with the nut. Okay, once you have the end panels on, if you sorry, if you have a unit that is more than four feet, you'll want to put this clear divider. This will go in between the tabs on the front door and then it will lay back on the unit. When you first connect this, it might be a little wobbly. Once you get the trays installed, they will hold it in place. So Get this tight down here. It'll go in between the tabs. And then you will feed a three-quarter inch screw.
screw through, line it up with the other side, and then tighten with a nut. And Probably you, peel that first. Right? It, yes, sorry. I, you will want to peel this plastic off before you attach it. Right now, I just ha kind of have it sitting in between there. It will wobble a little, but that's okay. Um, you'll want to get your uprights in place so that we can do trays. These are the notched L's that um, are packed with the frames. They were wrapped around the frames. To get it in place, you take this notch. You can see this notch in the back. That's what goes into the top of this. If you install that incorrect originally, you'll have to take that ap apart, flip it over so that these notches are on the back. Let me do it over here so you can see without the back. This goes down into your notch and kind of rests there, and that will allow you to find the placement at the bottom. So you'll put both in place. And then this, again, is the three-quarter inch screw that you've been using. It's the same one. You want to take a screw, feed it through the hole, and then through the tab to secure that. Again, tighten with a nut. I would suggest getting a screwdriver to really make sure that that's tight. Right now, I'm just going to do it by hand. So, you'll want to secure both of those. That's locked in place there by the notch at the top. And then you can start installing trays. Let me get these in real fast. Next, we're going to go to the trays. This new system has a generation three tray. It's a little different. If you've built any of our inlines previously, it's a little different. We're gonna build from the bottom up and each one will be secured on these uprights. So you'll want to start with one of the standard. There are three different types of trays. There is the standard tray. There's one that has the opening for a graphic in the middle. I'll show you where that goes. And then there's a top graphic tray, which will be the top. You'll want to make sure to get this bottom tray in that you open your door. It should, it's just a little uh, latch here. Turn it and pull that down. Otherwise, you will not be able to get the bottom tray in. So this new style tray works like slat wall. It has this L on the back of it. And that goes right into the notches. Slide it in pivot down and it's locked in. It can be slid back and forth if you didn't have the placement. It's that easy. So you can put the door back in place and start loading. You will have a total of six regular trays and then we'll get to the middle graphic. Can you do it one handed? After your sixth tray, you're going to take the one that's cut down and has a channel for your graphic. Make sure you put that. It's the fourth one from the top, seventh up from the bottom. That goes in place. Your last two regular trays. And then the last tray to install is the top graphic. It has an extra installed on the top of it. Show us the profile of that. Yeah. Here, yeah. this has the extended piece coming up. You still have your, your slat wall there. It goes... Right in and slides back down. Once you get more trays on this, this will stand up in between. And then you're done. Put your dividers in and 
merchandise.